Revelation 2, 8 to 11, the persecuted church. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Hi guys, it's come flying to the sky, and I want to talk a little bit today about a subject that is on probably most of our minds, and um, just something that I feel kind of prompted to uh, talk to you guys a little bit about, and that is regarding um, the persecuted church. And it's obviously something that has been a lot more in the news lately, so I know the persecution for um, those who follow Christ has been around ever since the disciples um, were still alive and most of them were mar martyred for uh, Jesus Christ. And I think the reason why it might be on more of our minds lately is because it's been on the news. I found more in particularly probably since last summer in regarding to ISIS and a lot of the persecution that they were doing. But it has been something that has been throughout the centuries. And um, it's, it's um, I think, brought it to, in a way, a little bit different level um, of our understanding of it in the Western world when there's obviously the, the footage and stuff of the actual um, killings of a lot of the, these Christians. And I haven't actually watched any of the actual footage yet. Maybe I will at some point, but I just I haven't felt necessarily the need to. Um, but it is something that has weighed on my heart. And um, it was a couple Sundays ago, um, I was scheduled for offertory in the church I've been going to since fall time. And I had asked God what he wanted me to sing, because normally you know, I sing or play guitar for that. And he put a specific song on my heart, and it's called I Pledge Allegiance to the Lamb. And it's a song about the martyrs. And so I sang that and was able to lead the congregation in a specific time of prayer for the persecuted church. And I was really thankful that God led me in that direction. And I just think that sometimes in North America, it's easy to hear a story and, um, you know, have some emotional response to it for a bit. But like literally in the next hour we can you know we, I mean our life moves on right because we're not in that situation we you know can go to our mochaccino gatherings and um, everything just moves on and um, what's been on my heart is to actually spend time in prayer for the persecuted church rather than just think about it and feel sorrow for them to spend time praying yesterday as I was kind of pondering what I was going to share here in the message. Um, I started reading in Hebrews chapter 11, and that is known as the faith chapter here in the New Testament. And it mentions a lot of the Old Testament people by name because of uh, their life was lived by faith, and it just takes note of a lot of them, um, from Abraham to Moses to even the woman Rahab. And then in verse 36, it kind of switches gears a little bit, but it's still talking about a life lived by faith. But it specifically goes into those who have lived their life of faith and have had the trials and um, the tortures and even the, the death um, for standing in their faith. And I am going to read that here, beginning verse 36 of Hebrews 11, and I'm going to read through into chapter 12 because 11 and 12 actually go together so still others had trials of mockings and scourgings yes and of chains and imprisonment they were stoned they were sawn in two were tempted were slain with the sword they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins being destitute afflicted tormented of whom the world was not worthy they wandered in deserts and mountains in dens and caves of the earth 
And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And I was thinking about this in in light of the 21 men who were martyred a couple days ago. Um, when we're reading at the beginning of chapter 12, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, that cloud of witnesses is referring to the group of people that the previous chapter is mentioning, all these people who lived and died by faith. And talking of the, the 21 men who, who died in faith in Jesus Christ, um, I want to encourage you to, I mean, yes, feel sorrow and grief and um, mourn with the families. But to also um, receive encouragement through their stance and through their testimony. That there are still Christians who stand and hold fast to the, to the, the life, the death, the resurrection, salvation through Jesus Christ. And um, draw encouragement. Because here in chapter 12 it talks about, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. There, there's all kinds of stuff that tries to weigh us down and tries to get us to come off course and to get off track and to stop running the race. Each one of us is tempted by all kinds of things um, to stop running the race. And I say let us draw encouragement from these people, from the, the testimony of their death standing in Jesus, to throw aside those things as the scripture says, and let us run that race looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So let us keep our eyes set on Jesus. And I encourage you, if you're struggling in your faith, feel free to contact me. We all struggle. And let us encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. We are going to see the day approaching. And know the times that we're in. So... Let us come together as the body and bring these families um, before the Lord in prayer. And um, one thing I also have been praying for is that their death would not just be another news story, but literally their story has gone around the world and the world has heard um, another um, powerful testimony of this group of young men who's taken a stand for Jesus Christ. And I pray for the people who've heard the story and don't know Christ that they see beyond the natural into the spiritual that there is something more. There's something more than our day-to-day -day cares of this world and that there is truly truth. And um, truth has come down to earth in love to to, to sacrifice himself and save us and that there is that that goes beyond like I said that they'll really be able to have the Holy Spirit draw them unto Jesus Christ and that that seed when it dies the lives of those men that it'll produce much fruit so if you would um, join me now in prayer I would like to pray for the families of these men but also just the 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 persecuted church in uh, in general worldwide uh, please join with me now father in heaven we come to you as the body of christ and in your word it says to carry each other's burdens lord we want to lift up to you now the persecuted church some of these brothers and sisters who live in the darkest corners of the earth where being a follower of christ comes at a high cost Lord, we lift them up before you, and we thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter. We ask that you bring comfort to them at this time, and your peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I ask for the joy of the Lord to well up from 
the the depths within them for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Father, I want to bring before you the families of uh, the martyred and be with them in this time of grief as they've lost loved ones and Father, we just ask that you just are really amongst the people there and um, give them that comfort and, and that strength to go on. I thank you, Lord, that these martyrs had the strength to not deny your name and they stood for the cause of Christ. God, we want to remember the persecutors in our prayers as well as you say to bless those who persecute you and pray for them. And Lord, we pray for them that your light shines through the darkness. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you draw men unto yourself. We know in the word that the Apostle Paul was just like many of these persecutors who took the life of many precious saints. And God, we ask that the testimony of these 21 young men will make an impact to the persecutors and also to the rest of the world for through their testimony many will hear of Jesus Christ again and have another opportunity. God I ask for the, the testimony of these young men to strengthen the church here in North America and that we start walking intently and diligently our walk with you and thank you Lord that your Holy Spirit gives us that strength to throw off the things that hinder us and Lord I ask for the new determination amongst your people to walk the walk and to let go of all of the things that have been hindering us and um, holding us back that we've been walking in sin and Lord I pray for a true revival amongst the body of Christ and I know sometimes that does come through persecution I pray for uh, a clean house Lord a, a church that has been made clean and whole and Lord we know that in your will and in your timing in your plans that will come to be Lord give us strength to keep our eyes on you and to run this race and to keep the faith in the name of Jesus I pray
Pledge allegiance.